decorated with state-of-the-art parking meters, orange canvas shade structures, and a colorful array of natural plants, Zach Street in downtown Tampa is turning heads in the urban design community. This curvaceous streetscape sports so much curb appeal that Mayor Bob Buckhorn dubbed it the promenade of the arts. And the name is fitting. Even the utility boxes are decorated. The transformation process started months ago under the artistic direction of Grand Booth Landscape Architecture, a regional design firm. David Vaughn, the Director of Contract Administration for the City of Tampa, was instrumental in creating Zach Street's new look. This was a chance to step back and, and from the outset of the design look at the overall streetscape and how this, how this street could perform and the kind of experiences that it could offer. And so we were looking at not only the sustainability features, we were looking at landscaping, we were looking at wider walks. From all indications, this innovative idea paid off. Zach Street has become the bridge between Tampa's busy downtown core and its cultural arts district. Well, the first thing that you notice on Zach Street are, are the wide sidewalks. The wide sidewalks get, make room for people to walk, be able to spend time just leisurely getting down the street. Uh, they have a lot of room to be able to move forward. If someone's riding a bike, they can also get on the, on the sidewalk as well. The other part is that there's trees at certain points where you can sit back and sort of enjoy, enjoy the shade. They're not big trees now, but they will be uh, in, in several years down the road. It really is a grand avenue for pedestrians to enjoy. Citizens and tourists alike have an easily identifiable path to the Glaciers Children's Museum, Curtis Hickson Waterfront Park, and the Tampa Riverwalk. We like to think that the Tampa Theater started the Arts District in Tampa. We opened our doors in 1926. Jill Watecki thinks the new Zack Street elevates the curb appeal of Tampa's iconic movie palace. Well, we're thrilled about the increase in foot traffic in downtown Tampa. With Zack Street, with all of the new restaurants on Franklin Street, with some of the new residential areas and all of these new little businesses popping up, we are seeing more and more people walking around downtown Tampa. And all it takes is for them to walk past the Tampa Theater and see that amazing marquee to know that something really special is going on here. For Waiteki and her boss, John Bell, the other really special thing along Zack Street is the medallion dedicated to the Tampa Theater. On the projector here, coming out of the beam, there's a little tribute to Fink Findlay, who is our resident <laughs> ghost. Um, as you know, Fink, anytime anything happens at the theater that's um, a little strange, we always blame Fink. Medallions like these are placed all along Zack Street and depict the people, places, and structures that are important to Tampa's cultural fabric. State Senator and Tampa native Arthenia Joyner loves the concept of the medallions. One in particular transports her back to her youth and to Tampa's former black business district, Central Avenue. It stretched from Henderson to Cass, and every black business that was in existence in this community was represented in those seven or eight blocks. And so as a child, I was privy to seeing what it's like to be a black business person, a black professional. I had uh, the love and affection of all of the people, and it was like family. Joyner is not bitter about the city's segregated past. She's optimistic that the medallions can foster a better sense of community. Tampa was built by all of the people that everybody played a part in making this city what it is today. To be embedded along the street in a medallion where people now will perhaps go further and say, let me do more to find out what role all of these people and all of these places that are exemplified by these medallions, what role did they play and making Tampa the city that it is today. This is Frank Crump for That Art Show.